Diamond P Sports presents championship drag racing from the National Hot Rod Association. The 1982 Spring Nationals. Brought to you by Goodyear Eagles High Performance Radials, the Racing Eagles Goodyear tamed for the street. And by Motorcraft. Motorcraft offers a complete line of automotive parts to fight the enemies of your engine. Motorcraft for sure. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. Reach for that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. annual Spring National, residing at National Trail Raceway just outside of Columbus, Ohio, and currently being attended by an absolutely overflow crowd. For the past seven years, Diamond P Sports has brought you this event, and each year it has provided our cameras rare insight into NHRA drag racing and the people of the sport. This year, reigning world champion Jeb Allen is the start of our story. He has caused his peers in top fuel racing to stop, ponder, and then take sides. At the start of eliminations this morning, Allen's car was being powered by the fourth motor to rest within the chassis in three days. He had destroyed three previous engines and knew that the one pushing him forward was the only chance he had to defeat Jim Bernard in the Northwind Special. Bernard qualified easily and was not suffering from mechanical problems, but the situation was a bit more complicated. The motor in Allen's car did not belong to him. It had been loaned to him by Mark Danicus, owner of the top fuel entry, driven by Lucille Lee. That car has carried Lucille to one national event victory so far this season, and she's currently second in the World Championship point standings, right behind Shirley Muldowney. The race was over at the instant of his start. In spite of the fact Bernard got to the finish line first, he left behind him a red light, instant disqualification. But it was then, after ensuring himself a berth in the second round, that Jeb Allen made a startling announcement. He was withdrawing from further competition because of engine problems. I'm, I'm scared of driving the car right now at this time. It's, uh, it's going to just blow to smithereens unless I go back to California and straighten things out and, and come back real strong at the end of the year, which we'll do. Okay, well, look at this record on your trailer. You'll be back. We will be, I hope. So why all the fuss? Well, to understand the situation, let's take a look at the pairings chart for this spring nationals. Remember that Muldowney and Lee are in a tight points chase for the world championship, and you see that with Jeb pulling out of the next round, Lucille gets a bye run, a free ride. But Muldowney has to run hard, facing competition from number one qualifier Frank Bradley, obviously a less favorable position, and she's not at all happy about it. I don't like it. No one, no one else likes it. No, you should have enough faith in your car, your driver, and your ability to go out and run for the money, like the boys do. And that's what we've always done until this year. So I don't know. What can I say? This is Lucille Lee, the driver of the car scheduled to run against Jeb Allen. Muldowney well, is not displeased with her fellow driver, but with the owner of the car, Mark Danicus. Mark, I'll uh, be straight up with you. There's a lot of conversation that Jeb Allen, in that he was using your engine, was being used to block for Lucille Lee and that the car is not really broken and he has pulled out to give Lucille a single and more points. Well, Steve, the best way I know to put this, and it, it makes us look bad now, but three days ago when Jeb's sitting over there on, this, on his tailgate, he has no motors, he's broken, he's out of money, nobody else in the place had helped the boy. So could it be that Jeb Allen, his car equipped with a motor borrowed from Mark Danicus, has withdrawn from the second round to give Lucille a free ride into the semifinals? Jeb, uh, you're familiar with the term blocking? Yeah, yeah, we are, Steve. You're being uh, kind of accused of that here and uh, giving Lucille a final and that you had uh, a motor out of her trailer. Well, you know, we did hurt the motor, like I said earlier. It could be repaired, yes, but I'm, I'm three motors in the hole right now. Um, and at $20,000 a whack. I could borrow one from another racer, but when I had to go race them, would I blow up their motor, you know, or, or what would I do, go borrow somebody else's motor at that point in time? So right now, I just feel it's the best time to throw in the towel, you know? Just like a, a, a fighter, somebody gets a cut eye, he can't fight no more. I'm out of motors. 
This is the second round of top fuel competition, and this is the only car on the racetrack at the moment. This is the one the controversy is centered around, driven by Lucille Lee. She is the only woman, other than Shirley Muldowney, ever to win a professional title at an NHRA championship event. Lucille, on a single run, was to have faced Jeb Allen, but we've told you there's a lot of controversy surrounding the fact that her competition has withdrawn from this round. For Lucille, it's a bye run. She could run the car hard, take it easy, but she can lose. But if you cross that center line or should touch the guardrail, you're disqualified. So do you risk making a hard run for lane choice, or you did, do you just make sure you keep it between the lines? Well, I can only run the car one way, and that's how Mark's got it set, and I think it's set for a really good run. But I'm just going to have to really uh, do my part and keep it on my own side. But you're not going to shut it off and just coast through? Oh, no. No. It's hard to shut it off. I, you know. <laughs> too much fun. Yeah. So Lucille Lee has a lot on her mind as she brings that 2,500 horsepower dragster to the starting line. Don't cross the center line, don't hit the guardrail, lay down a good run, but she's in trouble right off the start. The car, the engine exploding itself at the finish line, parts coming off the engine, and this presents an interesting problem. Can Lucille Lee and her car owner, Mark Danicus, come back for the semifinal round here at the Spring Nationals? I'm Dave McClellan, and along with Steve Evans, We'll find out in just a moment. As we get ready to continue in round number two of Top Fuel Racing at the Spring Nationals, this is the car that just exploded an engine, Lucille Lee. A big boom and a lot of fire in the lights, Lucille, and all for nothing because a 619 is not enough to get the lane choice, but you sure tried. Well, I did let up, too. Oh, did you? Yeah, right before I, well, it felt it start to lug. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a sign of becoming a veteran when you feel those things. <laughs> yeah, I really feel good about feeling it, but I know Mark's going to be really upset. Mm -hmm. Meantime, back at the starting line, our next pair of cars getting ready for this round of competition. One of them is driven by this lady, Shirley Muldowney, and I can assure you she doesn't care if Mark Danicus is really upset. What she's concerned about is this man, the number one qualifier in top fuel racing, Frank Bradley from Napa, California. Meantime, back in the pit area, in the funny car pit area, Billy Meyer's car is getting a lot of attention. The crew is physically lifting an engine out of the chassis by hand. Just another engine problem in this long weekend of racing. The burnout procedure started by our next two cars, Frank Bradley and Shirley Muldowney. It was way back in 1976 that Shirley Muldowney won her first ever NHRA national event title right here at the Spring Nationals. For Frank Bradley, in 1976, he won the Winter Nationals. He has been winless since that time. But at the Spring Nationals this year, he's the best in qualifying. You qualified number one for the first time. Does that give you any special confidence knowing that uh, you can outperform all of these other cars and have done so for three days? Well, uh, sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. Uh, being number one qualifier, that means you're right on the verge of probably smoking the tires or shaking a little bit. Uh, makes me a little nervous sometimes being number one. I'd rather be three or maybe four. The burnouts are completed and Frank Bradley looking ahead as his crew member checks the car over, Shirley backing into her own track. Her crew chief, Ron Tobler, checking the engine over. And now it's time to bring both cars to the starting line. This is round number two racing. They have both won in the previous round. The winner here will advance into the semifinals. The sky is beginning to get cloudy over National Trail Raceway. Possibly some bad weather starting to move in and everybody's mind is on that. But everybody's eye on the starting line. Shirley the last to stage. And Frank Bradley smokes the tires. Shirley Baldani with a big lead, but some engine problems at the finish line. She runs 5.83 seconds. Her speed is only 227 miles an hour, but the smoke indicating some problems for Shirley Muldowney. The problem's continuing in Billy Meyer's pit. Now it is a complete engine being picked up by hand and getting ready to try to lift it into that chassis. That's hard work. They must be having some problems with the electric winch system that is used generally to change these engines. Let's go to Steve. Shirley Muldowney comes out of her car and looks back at an oil-soaked motor. Sometimes these things aren't as serious as they look, as Shirley well knows. So you hope that it's a blown gasket or something and not all the pistons and rods. But, boy, when you race the number one qualifier, you lean on it, don't you? 
slightly. <laughs> um, I think they leaned on it a little bit, put some more horsepower in it. Could have lost a filter. That's the way these engines are designed, though, they're built to be leaned on because you can fix them in the time that you have. We'll have about an hour and 15 minutes if it doesn't rain on us. I think everything will be all right. Okay, your guys are here. You get to work. Shirley Muldowney continuing to extend her lead in the World Championship points chase. Here's a man that finished number two in the world last year, and he would love to wear that big number one again. Former world champion Gary Beck driving for Larry Miner. His competition, the new driver for the team of Candies and Hughes, new this year, this is Mark Oswald. Candies and Hughes out of Homa, Louisiana, a longtime team in drag racing. You saw them at Mark Oswald win the recent Cajun Nationals covered here on Diamond B Sports. But now Gary Beck's trying to take the measure. They both smoke the tires. It's a close race to the finish line. And it is Gary Beck winning it by about a half a car length. Mark Oswald some 10 miles an hour faster, but it didn't matter because Gary Beck got to the finish line first. As we watch again, smoke off the tires, indicating loss of traction for both drivers. At the finish line, they're almost side by side, but in the last second, Gary Beck pulls it out. You see the times, as I told you, Oswald closing hard at the finish, but Beck the winner. Gary Beck, you've had two tough races. Uh, those were both 590 elapsed times. You qualified with 570s. Uh, where are they? I think we're turning the tires a little bit out of the gate, Steve. It felt like it slipped a little bit just off the pad, but it, uh, it's hard to say. We're plenty glad to just win a few rounds. The first two rounds we've won this year, so we're happy to be right here. Back in Billy Myers' pit area, they've got the engine lifted up, ready to drop it into the chassis by hand. It seems that the other engine had a broken main bearing stud. They tried to replace it, were unable to do so, had to change engines. The winch broke, and here they are. Here at the starting line, our final two cars in this round of competition getting ready to go. Joe Amato psyching himself up as he rolls forward into the water area to start his burnout. Well, the burnout is exactly what you see. They are spinning the tires at such a speed, it literally burns the rubber on the tires to get them hot. His competition, Gene Snow, doing exactly the same thing as they now back up into their tracks trying to find the best traction. Gene Snow, one of the most famous names in all of drag racing out of Fort Worth, Texas, is against Joe Amato, who's celebrating his birthday today, moving up into the top fuel ranks after competing for several years in the pro comp ranks. Joe Amato winning his first round race with one of the quickest and fastest times ever recorded by the Old Forge Pennsylvania driver. He's got his hands full here though with Gene Snow, the KG veteran, and a tremendous red light. And Gene Snow shuts it off. He knows all he's got to do is coast it across the finish line. But for Joe Amato, maybe the psych job was just a little too heavy. As we look again, you see him way ahead of the yellow light and the green light. So Joe Amato out of competition. Why are you in so much hurry? Is it really worth the worry? Look around, then slow down. Gene Snow didn't worry about lane choice. It took him 16 seconds to get there. Steve? Dave, an update on that Billy Meyer story. We were wondering if he'd even make it into the lanes. He's the first car on the lanes. <laughs> There's nobody else even here yet. How on earth have you done this so quickly? Uh, practice. We have to do this a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you broke a lot of backs doing that by hand. Why? Yeah, it's a, we exploded the uh, winch in my face, and we went and borrowed Raymond's, and, and, and Raymond's wouldn't work on our deal, so we just had to do it by hand. Following the story of engine trouble here at the Spring Nationals, a lot of activity in the Lucille Lee Mark Danica spit area. Here's the engine you saw blow up, and there's the rocker arm cover that lost part of its metal. We'll be coming back to the Spring Nationals in Columbus, Ohio, with a second round of funny cars in just a moment. If you get up in the morning and your engine looks like this, then you've got troubles. So does the lady who drove this one to destruction, Lucille Lee. Well, in this day of musical engines, it's Lucille Lee's crew who uh, is the next to change motors. You've already done so. The other one sitting over here just destroyed. Yeah, we uh, kind of messed it up on the last run. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is change engines. That's right. It, it, we've got one more round to go, and so it's always good to know we have a spare. But these are fixable, and I'm sure if they have to get them back together before another round, they can do it. Just what you needed, another unknown quantity, this time the motor behind you. Exactly. But I'm always, uh, a lot of different things are always coming up for me. A lot of things are new. 
So it, uh, it really doesn't make that much difference. Engine problems rapidly becoming the big story of this spring national. Shirley Muldowney, Billy Meyer, Lucille Lee, Jeb Allen. The list is continuing to grow. And as we get set to go in round number two of funny car racing, we may find that the engine problem story could affect the outcome of this entire race. The 2,500 horsepower nitro burning funny car in the long crowd pleasing burnout. And this, the most famous burnout king of them all, the Chi Town Hustler, driven by Frank Hawley. Racing against Hawley in this round is Billy Meyer, and we've seen a lot of work by Billy and his crew literally changing an engine by hand to get this car ready for this round of racing. For the Chi Town Hustler team, and Frank Hawley, it's a tight race with Ray Beadle for the points championship lead in the World Championship Series. For Billy Meyer, he's taking dead aim on just getting past this round to move into the semifinals. The funny cars, mechanically duplicates of the top fuel dragsters, utilizing the nitro burning engine, the chassis configuration somewhat different with the engine in front of the driver, the body a fiberglass replica in Billy Meyer's case, of an 82 Trans Am. For Frank Hawley, his body style an 82 Dodge Charger. A good lead for both cars, Frank Hawley and Billy Meyer. And it is Hawley pulling it out at the end, but he's also got a little smoke indicating some possible engine damage. Frank Hawley using the two parachutes to bring him to a safe stop. This win moving him into the semifinal. The next two cars ready to go and out of the burnout area comes Don the Snake Prudhomme alongside of him, Kenny Bernstein. Prudhomme, the big story of the recent Cajun Nationals. As you watched right here on Diamond Peace Sports, Don Prudhomme and his Pontiac Trans Am established a new all-time speed record for funny cars, 250 miles an hour. For Kenny Bernstein, it has been a trouble plague season thus far. Kenny, out of Austin, Texas, has had lots of problems, but he's getting them sorted out at this event. For Don Prudhomme, former four-time world champion, he's ready for anything. Prudhomme in the Pontiac Trans Am, Kenny Bernstein driving the Mercury LN7 body creation. Both engines producing well over 2,500 horsepower. We're in the second round of the Spring Nationals Funny Car Eliminations. On the starting line, Don Prudhomme and Kenny Bernstein, and look at Bernstein leave the starting line. With a tremendous lead as Prudhomme just shuts it off, Bernstein may have solved all his problems at this event. Prudhomme slowly coasting across, but the story is Bernstein at a tremendous 6.08 second elapsed time. The bodies being lowered over our next two competitors. It is Dale Pauly driving the War Eagle. This car has been described by many as truly a rolling work of art. Pauly and his partner Mike Hamby with the War Eagle. Steve? Well, regular viewers of our Diamond P telecast may not recognize Kenny Bernstein's face with a smile on it, but we're going to see one. Yeah, really, I'm telling you, it was a nice race. That time she didn't move around quite as bad, Steve. We will be delighted with the ET in 08. Well, it's better than I thought. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little confused yet because when it shakes so much, I can't really tell where it's going. That time it didn't shake at all, and it just did what it was supposed to. Well, you loaded it for Prudhomme. Yeah, well, we really put a lot of clutch on it to see if we get the shake to go away, and it worked. And Kenny Bernstein hopes it continues to work for two more races. But the immediate thought of the moment on Dale Poldy's mind is this race, and he will be up against Al Segrini. Segrini, winner of the Winter Nationals thus far this season, is in there in the thick of things in the points chase. And one of the reasons why Al Segrini has been enjoying such success was evidenced here at the Spring Nationals in round number one of competition when he took on the current points leader, Raymond Beadle in the famed Blue Max. For Raymond Beadle, look at the smoke that is pouring out of this car as it sits on the starting line before the race is even underway. Lots of smoke indicating tremendous problems with the engine. Al Segrini, he's concentrating on the tree. He doesn't realize it. And really, 
Raymond Beadle is out of it before he ever left the line. Al Sagrini, a big win over Raymond Beadle. David, there is already an autopsy going on at the Blue Max pits trying to find out what is wrong with this motor. Raymond, it, it appeared to hurt itself early. A lot of smoke coming off the car. Yeah, the car was dead on the burnout. As soon as we, I stopped on the burnout, I knew it was dead, and uh, I backed up, and we did uh, the one little chirp, and it, it just, it was, the motor was dead. It already hurt one cylinder. So that's why I kind of hurried up and staged the car, I mean, just in case he might make an error on the starting line, which he didn't do. I mean, uh, I might have rushed him up a little bit. Like I said, we didn't have it. I had nothing to lose and everything to gain. The Blue Max crew hard at work trying to find out what went wrong with yet another engine here at the Spring Nationals. In the second round of racing, Al Segrini, having disposed of Ray Beetle, takes on Dale Paldy. A great start, but Paldy up in smoke, and Segrini, his tires locked to the pavement, streaks across the finish line and takes the win. A disappointment for Paldy. He had run very good in round number one, but for Al Segrini, he's happy as he moves into the next round. Already, as the cars turn off the racetrack, we've got another pair fired and ready to go. John Force and Tom Anderson. But right now, let's go down to Steve Evans. Well, for a guy who got in the show at the last possible moment, late Saturday afternoon, uh, you're looking awfully good now. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. We had problems the whole race. We just dropped the cylinders, and we picked it up that last ball firing pass, and it really felt good. It's starting to come together now, though. That's where it counts. The final pair of the second round of funny car eliminations with Tom Anderson driving Jim Womet's Wombat car. Anderson, a journeyman race driver, he has driven for several car owners and acquitted himself well against John Brute Force from California. Force in the 81 citation bodied entry, Tom Anderson driving an 82 Ford EXP body, the car owned by Jim Womet surprising many a racer at various national events and I'll tell you he's got John Force headed from wire to wire it is Tom Anderson at 6.23 seconds taking the measure of John Brute Force so the semifinals we find Al Segrini against Kenny Bernstein Frank Hawley going against Tom Anderson at the Spring National Back at National Trail Raceway near Columbus, Ohio, I'm Dave McClelland along with Steve Evans, and we're set to go with Pro Stock Elimination semi-final round for this 18th annual Spring Nationals Championship. These are the factory hot rods, but first, Steve's had a chance to catch up with Tom Anderson. All right, Tommy Anderson's car with dual parachutes stopped very quickly. The turnaround crew is still pushing it off with Tom's help. Tom, out of all the funny cars that changed engines, and there were three or four of them, you're the only one that got the wind light. I think I got lucky because I don't know how I don't know what we run, but it didn't feel very good. I think it dropped cylinders. We wrenched it up. This is our last engine. We got to make it last. Back at the starting line, the Pro Stocks ready to go. This man has been having lots of problems all season long. Bob Glidden is beginning though to get his Ford EXP sorted out here at the Spring Nationals. For Warren Johnson, his 1980 Oldsmobile Starfire is in the semifinals, but he's got his work cut out for him as Glidden has been running exceptionally well with his shotgun-motored Ford. 500 cubic inches for each, for the Oldsmobile, for the Ford. The weight of the cars, 2,300 pounds. The driver makes all the difference, and it's a red light for Warren Johnson. He left the starting line too soon. He knew he had to take a chance. He tried, he got there first, but back at the starting line, the red light in his lane indicates he left too soon. For Bob Glidden, another over 170 mile an hour pass in that 40 XP. A pair of Chevrolets, the world champion in the far lane, Lee Shepard, driving for Rare and Morrison out of Arlington, Texas, will be racing the man that finished number three in the world last season. That's Frank Iaconio. He's from Totowa, New Jersey. A perfect start. The two Chevy Camaros leaving the line as if they're one. It appears to be Lee Shepard by just about a few inches over Frank Iaconio. A 7.96 second elapsed time over 173 miles an hour as we watch again. There they are side by side a few hundred feet off the starting line and going to the finish line 1,320 feet away by inches. It is Lee Shepard. 
He's a little bit slower, but he got to the finish line first, indicating Frank Iaconio late off the starting line. The finals, Shepard versus Glidden. Steve? This is the quarter million dollar semi truck and trailer of Billy Meyer, just loaded to the walls with parts and pieces, but Meyer is out of competition. On the other hand, we have the quickest car in eliminations, the Chi Town Hustler. What year is this truck? Gosh, I, I almost forgot. I think it's a 66 or 7 or something <laughs> around there. Well, it's quite a contrast to the semi of Myers. In fact, it's got a 1968 Lions drag strip decal on the window. But you're low ET. You could leave here with a points lead. But if you make a mistake, Anderson's going to get you. He worried me all weekend when we qualified. He, you know, he run a couple O's and and uh, we've run him a couple national events. He's really quick on the lights. I mean, 480s and 90s, which is unheard of in a fuel car. And uh, you know, maybe I can be that sharp and maybe we'll just outrun him. And uh, it's really getting important at this far into the season. The top fuel semifinals, Shirley Muldowney against Gene Snow. A pair of veterans as Gene Snow takes on the lady that has won the world championship twice. For Snow, he was instrumental in funny car racing in the mid to late 60s, helped develop the cars as we know them today. Steve? This is Gene Snow. You haven't seen him on Diamond P Sports because when he was the first of the big funny car stars, they didn't televise drag races back then. You raced for a living for so many years, and uh, you retired from racing, uh, went in the oil business, have done well. You're back racing for the fun of it now. Yeah, that's really nice for a change, where if you can't make a race, why well, you're going home and worry about the next time. Uh, now you race Shirley. Yeah, now we race Shirley. She and I have raced three times. She's won twice. I've won once. I'm hoping I'm going to even it up this time. The prototype of the laid-back Texan from Fort Worth, Gene Snow, but he's going to have every bit of concentration that he can muster to try to get ahead of this woman at the finish line. Shirley Muldowney, as we said, she has won the world championship title twice, the only person ever to do that in top fuel racing. For Gene Snow, a return to the sport after several year layoff, instead of funny cars, he's encased in the roll cage of that top fuel dragster. And a great start for Shirley Muldowney. She builds up a big lead at the middle of the course, and there's a 5.87 second elapsed time. Her speed, 232 miles an hour. Shirley with a wave to our Diamond V cameras, as back on the starting line, the possibility of an all-woman final grows even greater. This woman, Lucille Lee, coming into the sport just a year ago, has already won one major NHRA title. Steve's caught up with Shirley. Shirley with Downey's comment, Davis, she rose out of the cockpit, looked at the motor and said, wonderful. A picture perfect pass, the prototype of a good run, a 587, and the reaction timers told us she had a full tenth of a second advantage off the line. Ooh, that does help sometimes, but uh, that's, like, that's like a needle in a haystack, you know, taking a new pump off the shelf and runs off the... Replace, it's like a heart transplant. <laughs> Unbelievable, I'm, I'm impressed myself. All right, we've got Lucille Lee and Gary back on the starting line. What do you think? Back, of course. Okay, Shirley Muldowney makes no bones about her sentiments. Steve, it's obvious who she wants to race in the finals, and that would be Gary Beck. But one thing's got to happen. Gary Beck has to win this race against Lucille Lee. Car owner Mark Danicus checking things over on the Lucille Lee car. For Gary Beck, patiently concentrating, creeping his way up to the starting line. Lucille Lee, as you remember, had lots of problems in the previous round. In fact, they had to put a whole new motor in. This could make a difference for her. Mark Danica is giving her the okay as they approach the electronic beams across that starting line. The light beams marking the official starting line. And up in smoke goes Lucille Lee. Gary Beck has got it, and his parachute comes out. It is Lucille Lee smoking out another motor. And what an unbelievable series of events as Lucille Lee using up another motor in the race against Gary Beck as we watch again. Look at her lose traction. The tires just smoking like it. It's a burnout. The race is over at that point. Gary Beck has hit one, but look at his parachute come out. It's getting warm down here, David, as Lucille Lee removes a wet tile she had tucked under her Nomex fire seat and her helmet comes off when it's your day, it's your day. When you smoked the tires, you thought you were through. Oh, I did. I really did. When I seen his chute come out, that was great. Well, the parachute had to have shaken out probably on his car. Yeah, more than likely. I'm sure it did with Gary. Well, it looks like Mark Dennis and the crew have a lot more work to do because you had to stay with it this time. They can't criticize you for winning the race and staying on the motor. Oh, that was great. 
Well, here we go. The moment a lot of people have been waiting for, an all-girl final. Yeah, I'd like another shot at that. You know, that's just what she said. <laughs> for the first time in history at an NHRA national event, two women in the finals of Top Fuel Eliminator, Lucille Lee and Shirley Muldowney. We're coming up next with Funny Car Semi-Finals. Don't go away. We'll be right back at the Spring National. Like a modern-day gladiator clad in his coat of armor, Al Segrini climbs astride his charger to get ready for the semi-final round of funny car racing at the Spring Nationals. But first, Steve Evans is with Gary Beck. Well, the story of Gary Beck's defeat by the tire-smoking Lucille Lee is right here, an empty parachute pack at half track. Gary? Yeah, Steve, it's uh, certainly uh, disappointing for us, you know, to uh, lose that way, but it was... Uh, uh, you know, an un unusual run for me. Everybody's been asking why, how come, what happened, you know. And why, how come, what happened. <laughs> and I've been telling them, you know, that I, don't, that I don't know. But I might buy myself a little time here, but I know exactly what happened. I pulled the parachute at half track. I went for my manual high speed and I missed the lever and I hit the, I hit the parachute lever. Unintentional. Unintentional. And, and it hit and I wasn't sure. It confused me because I thought I'd hit the high speed and I, the chute hit and uh, the engine pulled down and I thought the engine nosed over like it was burning up and before I realized that I had actually hit the parachute lever th then she had come up on me and it was too late to regroup because I think I probably could have beat her pulling the parachute to the finish line if I had known what was going on. This race in Funny Car Eliminator will match Kenny Bernstein against Al Segrini but before we get to that let's take a look at some action that took place earlier today here at the Spring Nationals in Sportsman Competition. In Stock Eliminator, Alan Peters against Tex Miller with Tex Miller, the champion. Super Stock Eliminator saw Don Wolf defeat Bob Michael. In Super Gas Competition, Dave Blazier and Steve Cohen, the winner, Dave Blazier. Competition Eliminator of First Time winner, Johnny Holloway defeating Bob Newberry. In Pro Stock Motorcycle Racing, a big upset, Joe Folgore defeating the favorite, Terry Vance. In Pro Comp Eliminator, it's the funny car of Bob Gottschalk, victorious over the dragster of Dan Nimmo. Diamond P Sports congratulates all the champions here at the 18th Annual Spring National. The crew under the fiberglass body, getting uh, ready to go as funny car racing coming up next. But first, let's join Steve. Trying to keep Raymond Beetle out of trouble is no easy matter, so I've cornered him here and we'll have, have him do a little forecasting for us on the funny car semifinals to come. All right, uh, what do you think of the Kenny Bernstein Alsa Greeny race here on the ladder? Well, Kenny's got the momentum now that he beat Perdome and uh, over Segrini. I'll probably give Bernstein the favorite about three to one. Okay, now the other half of the semis. We've got Frank Holly, the Chi Town Hustler, and Tom Anderson. I think you have almost an identical uh, situation. Holly with Austin Call there, they run awful good, and I'm going to give about three to two over Anderson. All right, thank you, uh, Raymond the Greek. Steve will be keeping track of Raymond's predictions uh, in these next two races. Al Segrini and Kenny Bernstein completing their burnout and backing up into the track left after their burnout. A lot of rubber down on that concrete starting line pad here at National Trail Raceway, providing, of course, the traction that moves these cars off the starting line. And, of course, that traction, all important. Putting the power to the ground and the clutch is one of the areas where it's most important and maybe some problems with Kenny Bernstein's clutch. No one is finding any consistency today. No, they're not at all. It's because the racetrack is, is as you know, and we know, a shaker right now. And until you find the combination that can get down the, uh, the shaker track, that's what happens. One runs good, one runs bad. Hopefully that one will teach us something. Kenny's last run, very good. He's hopeful that all the clutch work between rounds will pay off. Al Segrini in this field on the last qualifying attempt has Done very well for himself thus far, and look at this, a race in the semifinal as Al Segrini wins the race. Al Segrini over Kenny Bernstein, remind me, Steve, not to use Raymond Beetle as my handicapper. Al Segrini moving into the funny car finals for the second, what's going on in the Lucille Lee pit area? 
It's Jeb Allen's car, and obviously the engine is out of the car, and there it is on the hook. That is Mark Danicus, the owner of Lucille Lee's car, and that is the engine that Jeb Allen said was no good. And that's Lucille Lee's car, and it looks like they're getting ready to drop Jeb Allen's engine in the car. Let's go to Steve. Well, the lapse times don't really matter as long as you're in a berth in the final round. It was like a 627 to a 632, but you got there first in a lot of smoke. That's all right. We'll, we'll hurt a couple. It don't matter, as long as we're in the final. Right. Now, you probably won't get lane choice with that 27. That's okay. Like I told you earlier, I'm not worried about it. I mean, we didn't run that lane ever, so it seems pretty tight, really. Okay, let's go back to the starting line of Dave McClellan and see who Al Segrini's opponent will be in the funny car final. Right you are, Steve, and it'll be one of these two. It'll be Frank Hawley at the wheel of the Chi-Town Hustler, or it could be Tom Anderson driving Jim Wimette's car. Frank Hawley has a lot of respect for young Tom Anderson. He regards him as one of the quickest drivers in the sport off the starting line. Both drivers taking their good sweet time and getting into the staging beam. Doesn't appear to be any great psychological battle. They're just getting everything set to their liking before they pull into that light beam that indicates they are properly staged. The two cars leave the starting line as one as Frank Hawley pulls ahead at the finish line. Tom Anderson possibly sensing something going wrong with the car, shuts it off early and Frank Hawley moves into the Spring Nationals Funny Car Final. Jeb Allen is hard at work in the pit area. He's preparing the engine that he declined to run in the second round of competition, obviously getting ready to drop it into Lucille Lee's car. Remember, this engine is the one that is owned by Mark Danicus. He had previously loaned it to Jeb Allen for his use. Jeb declined to run it after thinking he had hurt the motor in round number one. Not only is the engine gone out of Jeb Allen's car, but the wheels and tires, too. Steve is caught up with Frank Hawley. Right, a 611 gives you lane choice. Boy, you're looking awfully good. Well, I don't know. I spun the tires a lot. I don't know if we want to stay there or go over there, or, or maybe we'll just let Al take his pick. <laughs> Can they get Lucille Lee's car ready for the finals? We'll find out in just a moment as we return to the Spring Nationals. In the Lucille Lee pit, the final preparations are being made to get this car ready for the finals. Steve Evans is there. The Lucille Lee car, David, is now being rolled under the hoist, the engine out of the Jeb Allen machine. You'll recall the one uh, that was withdrawn from competition. Well, they feel it must have one more in it because it is being slid into the frame rails right now. The tires in place on the car are even off of the Jeb Allen car. And it appears that an awful lot of teams have pitched in to help here to defeat Shirley Muldowney. Hi, Shirley Muldani. Have you seen what's going on down the road here? I know exactly what's going on. They are taking the motor out of Jeb's car, right? The motor that would not run the round he had to race Lucille, and they're putting it in Lucille's car. So it's another buy. There's an awful lot of people that are helping out down there, is it? Uh, Those are the people that got beat. They have nothing to do with their time, so they are over there. That's a good place for them. And they enjoy being part of that thrash, or do they want to see Shirley Muldani lose? I can't believe that. Well, I'm sure they want to see me lose. But you've got to be uh, rather happy looking at, at the difference in the two operations. Here's your guys so organized, the car made a prototype pass. We have class. There is a big difference. While the action continues in the top fuel pit area on the starting line, it is the finals of Pro Stock Eliminator. Ford versus Chevrolet, and this is the best Bob Glidden has run all year long. For Lee Shepard, his normal consistency in the Camaro of Rare and Morrison. The reigning world champion, Lee Shepard, matched against his nemesis, Bob Glidden. Glidden has got the new Ford EXP. He finished number two in the world while Lee Shepard proudly wearing the big number one, indicating the world champion title. It appears to be a slight lead for Shepard, but it's so close it's impossible to call it at this point. And the wind light shows Bob Glidden takes the victory. 792 at 170 miles an hour. As we watch again, you see two great drivers doing their job to perfection. Side by side at that point. Side by side as they enter the speed trap and just by inches, it is Bob Clinton there first. The clock showing how close it really was at the finish line. Let's go down to Steve Evans. Bob Glidden and his Ford EXP have triumphed at an NHRA major event over his chief rival, the reigning world champion, Lee Shepard. You see the two of them 
Everybody enjoys a good race, win or lose. You didn't think you won? Close. I, I, it was a close. It was one. thousands of a second between the two laps times. It was very close. And it was a one thousandth of a second different reaction time. I'll tell you, I'm just darn happy to be here to win a race for a change. You've I been such a say. sour puss. I'm happy too. No, I haven't. <laughs> I've just, it's been a long dry spell. We're not used to going so long without at least a little bone. And I, if we're, Steve, we're just a darn happy we can't hardly stand right now. Well, congratulations to you. Run, and you know? uh, 792, I believe it was to his 793. But if you use the third digit, you know, just thousand. That's wonderful. And you Great. drove beautifully too. Thank you. Bob Glidden winning his fourth straight Spring Nationals title. Funny car on the line. Frank Hawley and the Chi Town hustler, Al Sagrini. Coming into this race, nobody figured that it would be Al Sagrini in the final. Frank Hawley, that's a different story. He has recorded low elapsed time of eliminations thus far. Sagrini and Hawley, the 18th annual Spring Nationals title at stake in Funny Car Eliminator. And Frank Hawley to a good lead. Segrini going out of control so lightly. And Hawley straight to the finish line to a 6.07 second elapsed time. And you see a slight wheel stand by Al Segrini. The rear tires breaking traction. He losing control and the race going to Frank Hawley. Steve? You know, one thing, it, it, a lot of people, spectators in the pits, like they can at the direct, they look at those big semis and they can't even fantasize owning something like that. They look at your old truck and you guys, ain't nothing fancy about you and you go out and whip the best. Well, it might not look too fancy, but the, the knowledge is there. Plenty sophisticated. That's it, that's it. I mean, the car's as good as any and, and it proves it just the way it runs and the crew and stuff. And, and uh, I'm running out of words, Steve. Okay, I don't blame it. Austin Coyle, Farconis Coyle and Minnick, the owners of the car from Chicago, Illinois. The Chi Town Hustler can do a lot more than just long, smoky burnouts. The second win of the year for Frank Hawley. The war of words and wrenches is over. The responsibility now rests on the shoulders of these two drivers. The first all-female final in the history of professional drag racing. We'll be back in a moment. After all of the hard work, all of the tension that has been building in the pit area, we are to the finals in Top Fuel Eliminator. And for the first time in history, two women drivers are meeting to take home a national event title. Lucille Lee will be in the near lane. Shirley Muldowney, who practically owns National Trail Raceway, in the right-hand lane. Car owner Mark Danicus has worked hard, and Lucille Lee is pointing to something in the cockpit. Mark Danicus says it's okay, bring the car to the starting line. The motor beginning to show a little oil smoke earlier. It could possibly be just residue left after all the work to get that engine changed out of Jeb Allen's car. Having a little difficulty staging Lucille Lee for Shirley Baldowney. She is concentrating on the Christmas tree, thinking only about running her own race. This is it, top fuel final at the Spring National. And Shirley Baldowney pulls a big lead off the starting line, and she is never to be headed as the engine goes away in Lucille Lee, and Shirley Baldowney wins her fourth Spring Nationals title. With her hand in the air, she waves to the Diamond V camera, and you can see she left Lucille Lee sitting at the gate. Shirley Baldowney continuing to extend her lead, marking the fourth win ever for the Spring Nationals title. David Shirley Muldowney came to the quickest halt I have ever seen. She was already clapping her hands together before she ever made the turnoff. Another thing I have never seen from this professional race car driver, but she is pumped. 577 for Shirley Muldowney. <laughs> Did she like that or what, huh? Let her get the pink helmet off as soon as she possibly can. And, and, and surely you're an emotional lady, you wouldn't deny that. And even in a situation where you honestly felt maybe people were ganging up on you, you kept your cool. I had to. I, I knew if I lost this one, everybody in the world, especially in Schenectady, New York, would be mad at me. Other than the bonus points for winning the event, though, she keeps pace uh, with you as far as that title chase is concerned. But we got a long ways to go. Lucille has a long ways to go, but I think she is a credit. I like her. She's a nice lady, and I, she should be able to do her own thing. I think she'd be better off. A fitting climax to this great race. For Steve Evans, I'm Dave McClellan saying so long from Columbus, Ohio.
1982 Spring Nationals has been brought to you by Goodyear Eagle High Performance Radials, the Racing Eagles Goodyear Tamed for the Street, and by Meguiar's Car Wax. For over 50 years, Meguiar's quality waxes and polishes have been the choice of car care experts. And by English Leather. Get an A in English with English Leather, and women will never fail you. After shave and cologne for men. Promotional consideration provided for and a fee paid by trustworthy hardware stores. The problem solvers, do-it-yourself hardware professionals, supplying your needs with quality products and expert advice. Trustworthy hardware stores. And by Bardall. World-famous Bardall makes your car last longer, run better. Bardall saves you money. Available at Kmart and most auto parts stores. And by the MVP microwave oven from Magic Chef. The combination microwave oven vent hood that rises above the problem of where to put it. Furnished by Magic Chef. And by... I'm very handy thanks to 3-in-1 oil. It fights rust, lubricates, stops squeaks. 3-in-1 oil is so easy, even you guys can use it. I do home repair with plastic wood. I fixed my chair, molded my baseboard, built holes in my wall. Plastic wood is so easy, even you guys can use it. Coverage of the 1982 National Hot Rod Association Spring Nationals is a Diamond P Sports presentation.